we're talking about basketball, right? We're I, we're like a week away from seeing preseason games or something. Like I don't know exactly how far away, but pretty quick, like, man. It, it, it's in no time. You know, training camp just picked up. We saw NBA media day. There's all sorts of news, you know, bouncing around about different things. Um, like KD, Nash, did they work it out? It seemed like maybe they had a moment. Whatever that means. I, I don't know how anybody with Nash's level of pedigree as far as a player, like, just ignores what KD just did. I can't imagine. But anyway... You know, that's something that needs to be figured out. But then another conflict between a coach and a player, we're talking about DeAndre Ayton and Monty Williams, they haven't talked since Game 7, bro. So that was one of the all-time classic bad endings. It reminded me a lot of the way Ben Simmons and Doc Rivers ended the season in Philadelphia, and we never saw Ben Simmons play again. It was He got thrown under the bus for not taking shots, you know, and so... Those are kind of like peripheral things, you know, that we're watching in the NBA. Um, you got anything to add about either of those coach-player conflicts? Yeah, man. The Monty Williams thing, like, I listen, there are going to be young players that just don't play up to a game seven. And sometimes the best thing you can do for their careers is benching them. And, and I've been there, man, where we had this, you know, phenomenal player in high school. And, you know, my senior year, he went out there and just nothing went in. I think he shot like 0 for 14 or 0 for 15 in the game. You know, he choked hardcore, right? And it's not that you're like, oh, my God, like, what the hell, right? But when at the last two minutes of the game, he was benched. And it wasn't anything against him, but it's just sometimes you can't put those guys out there. You just can't. You're like, you haven't hit anything. You haven't, you know you're not going to, you know, all of a sudden start hitting shots, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And with DeAndre Ayton, like, he just wasn't playing up to game seven. And guess what? He got benched. So what is he going to do next time? He knows the standard. He knows what he needs to do. And he can take that as an insult. But I guarantee you during the season, when Coach Monty Williams says, hey, it's game seven time, guess what? He's going to know what that means. And if he doesn't step up, he's going to fucking sit right down next to Coach Monty Williams. All right, man. Sounds like you're still living in the past, bro. That's cool. I get it. That's how no, we no, would have handled it no. in our day. It's, it's not about handling in, in, in our day. It's about you know teaching a young player an important lesson. If this yeah. was a if this was an NBA veteran, you don't do this to an NBA veteran, bro. He was the number one pick. I, listen, a young player. Yeah, but my point is, first contract, young player, first contract. Right, and. They matched. So he obviously went out there and got a contract in, with Indiana that he wanted to go play. But not talking to him, bro, but listen, bad sign. Bad, listen, bad, bad sign of leadership right there. I, I understand. but And I'm a big fan of Monty I'm, Williams. I'm a huge fan of Monty Williams. And but that's why that's I, I feel like there's more to the story than just listening to this thing on, no, on Twitter is what, you know, he's asked – um, hey, when you and Coach Monty Williams and he immediately interrupted him and says, we haven't talked at all. Like, there, to me, listen, the way that he was emotional like that, there's more to this fucking story than we're, we're understanding, okay? It, it's a long season. He's been there for a couple of years. There's more to the story. And, and what that part is, we don't know. Bro, but they'll listen, work it out. I've been a big fan of Monty Williams. But let's face it, when he reunited with Chris Paul... Like, and they talked about the time in New Orleans. It wasn't all kumbaya moments. It was like, mm. he was too hard. He was too critical. He's a harsh he coach, yeah. too controlling, right? And now, True. like, people were, like, acting like, oh, look, he's he's so much more mature. He's worked through it. You know, life has softened him, all this shit. And then now we're looking at it like he's run into another problem where mm. his will is, like, anyway, we'll move on. I... I, I I I hope I hope they can figure it out because he if was they a thunder can't coach. figure it out, he will be looking someone, for a new coach. I really appreciate his family. I appreciate him, but I'm just saying that's that's not good. I don't care who you are. I don't well, care. Think about where it. you're from. What's that's your longevity as a head coach to a team that you can't figure out how to win and you have a championship caliber team? Right, and 
Oh, and by it's, the way, you're having window. conflict with, with stars on the yeah. team? So that's what I'm saying. This is his last year. He figures this out or he's done. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if James Jones has the kahunas to make that call after you know, whatever, but he needs to. We'll see. That, that's a big time. That's a big boy decision to get rid of a, a coach like Monty Williams after he got you to the finals. But yeah, it but might we've be seen the it right happen thing. before for younger coaches. You right. know, younger in their aspect of coaching career, right. head coaching career, right? Like Rick so, Carl got me, fired like, right before Larry Brown led the Pistons to a championship, right? Yeah, but Carl was you know he was legit, and yep. he went on to prove that you know Indiana, then Dallas, and do it. We're obviously talking about the Thunder here, and we've got some news that is blah. Like, Vic Krejci has been traded. I like Vic. I did, too. His whole time there, I've said his name right now, like, three times. But um, now he's off to the Hawks. We're getting a player that I really, really like uh, liked Liked. five years ago. (laughs) (laughs) But Mo Harkless, we're getting him. But we're getting a second-round pick, which means— But there's no way we keep him. Right. I mean, but here's, we say that, bro, no way we keep more Harkless, right? But in the reality, we always have veterans. Okay. We so if veterans. we, if we keep more Harkless, he's a professional, we try to re- reunite him with his, his better years, right? Or at least, you know, which younger guy are we getting rid of? I'm not worried because here's right now thing. we don't have to get rid of anybody else. I don't think. Okay. But I feel like we got rid of too many people too fast. Like we saw Ty Jerome not go to media day. He said bye bye bye. We already bye-bye. saw Isaiah Roby bye 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 early in the summer. The Krejci is gone, but that's a, that's the three places that we needed to in order to fill those spots. And now we right. don't have to cut anybody. That's why I was saying is like if we keep Mo Harkless, maybe it's because another injury. But to me, like like at this point, we don't have to cut any of our young, really good players like Maladon and and other players like that. Does Mo have any? used to any teams in the NBA anymore or it's like is he just like a buyout I, I listen he could buy out and go sign to the minimum with the Blazers because where he had to his me, best years like he seems like a future coach like he's got that type of you know, he's played at a really high level for a lot of really high level coaches and he understands the, the modern NBA and I feel like yeah we wouldn't want to see any, any of the young players lose a spot but if like, say they did have a plan to move on past Derek Favors, right? Mo Harkless could be plugged into that. Like, basically, you're here to show the young players what it means to be a professional role. Which well, I, I would love. Mo would I, be I would somebody who would be great for that. He would be great for that. But at this and he's stage. Cheap, and he's cheaper than than uh, uh, Derek Favors. Right. By like six million or five and a half or whatever it is. But so. in the end, more than likely. We're not keeping him, and we're probably going to keep Derek Favors for just a little bit longer until, you know, like he has some value as an expiring contract. So as soon as somebody's yeah. willing to, like, recognize that their A plan has fallen apart and they, they need to bail out Man, with an expiring listen, contract, he's there. You know what I want to see? Yeah. Uh, a young um, injured big man that gets injured for the season that will be back next season that will fit our scheme a lot better that we could trade Derek favors for that young player. And we could have, you know, when I say a young big man, I'm talking like solely to the aspect of being that, that physical body that Derek favors is. And, you know, we always need somebody like that on our bench. We yeah. don't need the traditional big man for every single game, but there are teams that are, we have to have more traditional big man because, you know, playing against DeAndre Ayton or playing against uh, Yoko or Embiid or whatever, you have to have uh, somebody that can take a lot of the banging and bruising and, and cause the other players to get tired. And that's the great thing about, you know, having a, a big man rotation like this Thunder team is going to have. Uh, but Derek Favors to me is, is a great player to have, you know, in the locker room on your bench and putting in a good 12 to 14 minutes a game. Uh, does that fit with this Thunder team? That you know, I think he has value even halfway through the year uh, for a trade partner. So five million dollar, you know, trade piece. You got a big man that's injured, not going to make it. Uh, you know, you need a you know, another big man for the playoff push. I, I could see a totally something like that happening. Um, you know, let's just say, you know, a, a team like the Timberwolves, right? 
you have a, a, a player, you know, they just went out and got the Utah big man, um, Gobert, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just say, like, he gets injured and is out for, you know, like two and a half months just before the playoffs. Like, this would be a perfect opportunity for them to go out and get a player that's similar to what he can do and essentially helping Cat still understand his role. So, again, these are the, the, the moves that we'll see as time goes on. But, you know, we want to make sure that, that we really help uh, any team that we can uh, make that playoff push if that's what they're trying to do because we could pick up a, a first-rounder for, for a piece like that when you're desperate. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for sure, there's a, there's a number of reasons why. But um, it's one of the situations where we get paid a first-rounder to take him pay the first rounder, get rid of him. And yeah. that's Sam Presti's um, DNA, really. So Yeah, so why get rid of him? You right. know, like keep him on your team. Until right the right opportunity, right? So um, let's talk a little bit about Shea. Bro, I felt like um, we were getting rebuked quite a bit at the media day. Um, <laughs> Shea um, makes it really clear he wants to say Sam Presti, like, Look, we just explored the ideas that the the rest of the media was talking about, and we just said, like, does Shea want to stay if it's going to be another year, right? And Bro, you know what the, we did? What? What we did is simple, was uh, we wanted to ask the questions that nobody else was asking. Right. We wanted to clarify the questions that nobody else was asking. Like, we, 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 we put out there some ideas, like, if we had Shea, right? Um, at full strength and we have Josh Giddy at full strength, you know, like, and no Chet, how does this hurt the team? Like, these are the questions that Sam Presti even addressed by himself and talking to the media before his question time, you know, like, like it was the cohesiveness that he was excited about and all this other stuff. So for me, like, I understand that we, we chapped a lot of people's asses by, by doing these, some of those, you know, episodes, but man, I gotta be honest. I'm glad we did because to me, it's like, here's the thing. If we didn't, there wouldn't have been so many questions at the media. Like, are you committed to this team? Are you committed long-term to this organization? Right? There wouldn't have been as many. Like, or hints to that. Because that would have ended. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't know. If we would have been able to sit here and say, oh, yeah, Shea's staying with a Thunder, 100%. If it wasn't for the, some of the questions that we brought up. We brought up some of the questions that, you know, a lot of diehard fans that know a lot about basketball were asking. You right. know, a lot of people in the NBA were asking because guess what? Yes, if you're looking at young, talented players under 25 years old that have all-star potential, it's a small amount of players out there. So, of course, from Dominic Mitchell, people would be like, okay, now he's off the trade block. Who's the next person? Right? right? And you're looking at a list and you're saying, okay, well, this player, this player, this player. And, again, it goes back down to disrespect towards Shea. Because if this is the way that Shea is looked at by the rest of the NBA as a top 25 player, and then the ESPN ranks in, what, 66th? It just yeah. shows you the disconnect from who Shea is and the player he is. Yeah. So, you know, again, we were never saying trade Shea. We want Shea to be on this team for the rest of his career. But we were saying is we have to also sit back and say, Shea, what is your desire? Because that's what Sam Presti is going to say to Shea whenever a, a big moment like this happens. Like, we, we, yeah. this is not the old NBA where we own the player's contract, we own them. Yeah. This is the old NBA where any player or any organization that says, we own your contract, you're going to stay with us. And the player revolts, turns into a Paul George situation where you get a fraction of what he's worth. Right. And that's what every team wants to avoid. So if Shea goes to Sam Preston and says, I want out of Oklahoma City because it's going to be another two years of, of getting this team together, then Sam's going to have to say, all right, let's try to work out a deal to a team that you want to go to. Because yeah. if he doesn't, it's all over. But, yeah, and, and that's why, will... to me, like it's it's we brought this stuff up not to cause issues, but because we love Shea right. and we support him, no matter what he decides. And 
I thought it was pretty rich to hear Andrew Sleck ask Shay how he felt, you know, about being around, was he committed to the team and how he felt about people talking oh, yeah. about him potentially being traded when Andrew has literally started all the trade rumors. Oh all my of gosh, them. dude. All Ever since them. he was like Cade Cunningham, like trade Shay for sure for Cade Cunningham. And then like, next thing you know, you hear Bill Simmons talking about it. And it's like, I'm telling you, I don't care what anybody says, shit runs downhill. And I'm telling you, there's some bullshit being passed around there. We only asked the question, how committed was Shea to the long-term future if we knew Chet was going to be hurt and it was going to take longer, right? That's what and, we and asked. We also he, asked... Like, literally was trying to give him away for Kate, which will look pretty bad historically when this is all done. Well, and we also asked the question, and it was one of our most listened to episodes recently, was, um, you know, how does Josh Giddy and Shay mix? Right. Like, how does that combo work? You know, is there an opportunity for us to trade because of the it's it's going to, you know, decrease how valuable Shay is, you know, right. like these are these are things that we're working out. Like we we understand that they're not necessarily popular ideas and thoughts for Thunder people, but to us, they are. And, and the reason is, is because we look at Josh Giddy's game as the next level game. Right. Like. And whenever you see a next level game, you have to stop and say, you know, whether it's Luca or Joka or, you know, Embiid or fill in the blanks of these young athletes that are coming up saying, does this person mix with this person? Are they going to be able to combine on a team and do things that are, are proper? Yeah. We need That's that James Worthy questions. for our Magic Johnson. Right? We watched them play 20 games together last year. That's it. Right. You know, like, of course, we're going to ask this question because the second Shea goes down, uh, down, you see Josh Giddy come out with some insane stats. And right. that wasn't because Shea went down. That was because Josh was becoming more familiar with the game. Right. You know, like together, they're going to be an unbelievable combination. Maybe one of the best young duo combo combination in the league, duo right. guard combination in the league. Right. They're going to make teams stop. It's it's not about who plays point guard. It's not anything like that. That's not how our offense is run. There right. is no set point guard. Right. You know, it's 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 running a team run point guard just like we run a team run um big man. And sometimes we're going to have three big men out, out on the floor at, at one time. And it's just going to happen. And I'm okay with that. And it's just going to be the rotation and the way things go. It won't be long, but it will happen. That's right. what I love about this team, bro. It's it's going to have so much, like, you know, I, I look at it like this. is The NBA is a, like a one dimension, right, man? So you yeah. got this one dimension with the NBA versus, like, uh, man, I, I've been getting into watching a lot of footy, right? The AFL from Australia, you know? Yeah, dude. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm pulling up the window. Right now, I'm going to hit share, and I got to go check on my dog really fast. And I'm going to hit okay, play. Cool. You explain what we're watching, bro. Well, this is just one of the matches I was watching. It's the the um, Geelong Cats versus the Sydney Swans. It was the championship. Um, man, this is just insanity. First of all, is this is becoming my favorite sport right here. I, I love I love basketball, um, and that will always be my favorite sport. But anything is that is this insane, this physical – this intense like look at the crowd first of all everybody's going fucking bonkers look at this pitch man it's massive okay and you're looking at this you're looking at i mean so much is going on and when you're talking about um hits right here when a pass is thrown over top there's knees knees in the back of the head like i have never seen before it is it is a gnarly sport i fucking love this this is like this is way better than American football. The physicality, uh, the reality is, is that this makes American football looks like the WWE, like fake football because of like, oh, you can't hit him here. You can't hit him here. This is real man's football. This is the way that football is supposed to be played right here. Like straight up motherfucking getting hit, getting dismolished, getting hit, just smashed, man. Like I have yet to see anything like this. This right here has really got me excited. I watched this right here as a highlight because I was looking up 
uh, some of the stuff that Josh Giddy has done. And one of the uh, things that Josh Giddy was able to do was Tom Mitchell, uh, which got to the semifinals um, of this year's um, league play, which is great. He plays for the Hawthorne Hawks. He does this uh, thing with Josh Giddy, and I started, I watched it, and I got like, oh, man, some of these passes and the way he's, he's kicking the ball and the angles that he's kicking the ball is, like, truly spectacular. And I get excited about it. I'm like, man, if this is the way it's played, I want to see more, right? So then I pulled up this game right here, and I started watching the highlights and the knees in the back of the head, the way that he's catching the ball like this right here in the box and how much it counts for points. Like, I get really amped up. Like, there's, like, so many different aspects to this game. And I keep thinking about Josh Giddy's game, right, man? And how Josh Giddy's game really re reflects to this. And it goes back to this moment that we watched Josh Giddy uh, on the sideline, right, Mark? He's, he's just observing. Before he takes the ball, right? Watch Josh Giddy, guys, this season. Before he takes the ball off, um, out of the sidelines, he steps on the court and he just watches, right? Right, yeah. Okay? It, and, and it goes back to this. So much is going on right here. You always have to watch everything that's going on. Everything. You always have to see where guys are open, where the a ball is coming at. Are you going to get knee in the back of the head? Because these guys get, like, fucking destroyed out there. And if that's happening, right, and then all of a sudden you go in and start playing in, in basketball, because Josh Giddy, this is what Josh Giddy did for a while, played footy, um, up until he's 16, he said. So – if this is the way everything is going and all of a sudden basketball starts becoming your main sport, it goes from like three dimensional, right? To all of a sudden one dimensional because basketball is such a softer sport of sorts, right? It's yeah. a like not as fast pace. Like there's not as much happening. There's, you know, um, easier passes than here. You're not, you don't have to worry about kicking the ball. All of a sudden it becomes, way easier and then you see josh giddy make these insane passes it's because he's learned how to watch players out here how to consistently can communicate with guys and move around like listen i watched so many times in, in the three matches that i have watched now okay and i've watched three full matches in the last uh like 12 hours okay like yeah. every single match that I've, I've watched there's a lot of eyes moving communicating with the fucking eyes that's what josh giddy's does so well yeah like him and Kenny, eye communication, boom, boom. But this has quickly become, and I was telling Chencho uh, the other uh, today, actually, just before we got on the podcast, I was like, man, I'm so into this. You got to check these guys out. And like the Swans are great, man. And, you know, especially the fact that, that uh, Thomas Mitchell played for the Swans early in his career. Um, but I really love the way that the Geelong Cats play, man. They're super physical. They're super intense. Um, obviously they're, they're incredibly good this year. Um, this is the championship, um, game and they just blew out the swans. Um, but I also like the fact that this is the team that we watched Mark that special about the other day, uh, where they went into the stands and they pulled out that, uh, that, that kid from the stands to party yeah. with them. Right. Yeah. Like this is exactly what I like to see, man. Look at the place, man. The stadium is fucking rocking, man. Like I, the excitement, right. And yeah. then you see Josh Giddy pick basketball over this man, right? Yeah. Like, this is what he grew up watching and going and watching games at. And then you see Josh Giddy, and he picks the sport that he's picked. And I, I get excited, man, because now we get to watch Josh Giddy make these insane passes. And it's because he learned how to pass the ball in a, in a crazy way by playing footy. Right? right. He learned how to position himself playing footy. He learned the physical um, contact. When you get contact, how to finish with it. Like, listen, Josh Giddy has molded his game using footy as the prime example, man. And if you think about that and truly understand that, like, Josh Giddy is going to be one of those players that people are going to stop and wonder, how the hell did he slip that far in a draft? Because this young man is, is, is playing footy while everybody else is playing basketball. And to me, that's the most impressive thing I've, I've seen because footy is one of the most complicated, beautiful sports I have yet to see. It makes literally the NFL, which is National Football League, look like they play WWE because these hits, these grabs, the knees to the back, the pushes, the bro, this is a man's league. This is a fucking man's league. And this is why I will always, always continue watching 
footy because I'm I'm hooked, bro. I'm hooked on a insane level. This is this is insanity, bro. True insanity. So like when you watch the game a little bit, you notice a lot of kicks. So with that, but it's said, the, it's the bro. It's what I watched is it's oh man, this is what makes me excited. It's the footwork of the kicks that Josh does, right? Yeah, and he uses that power to transfer to the pass. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like a 51 yard or 51 uh, foot pass for Josh Giddy is like a flick. Yeah. How is it only just a flick? Well, it's because he learned how to pass using his feet from footy, not yeah. from feet, for using his 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 lower body by by footy. Yeah, you Positioning, know, and, right? and dude. Listen, I'm telling you guys right now, if if you listen to our show and you love our show, you need to continue, first of all, watching these highlights. First this of all, get, just one get game. some help. You're going to need some help in life. Get some Bro. psychiatrist or something. If you listen to our show, you're fucked. That's my first thing. Second thing. <laughs> listen, I, I don't know, Mark, if you know this or not, but when I went to the military academy, which is uh, in Big Sandy, Texas, it's not really a military academy, but we'll call it a military academy just because the way they fuck with you. Okay. But when I went there, they had a, a, a team, which was a rugby team, right, man? Right. And they would go play against other smaller colleges because, you know, whatever. Um, and it wasn't really like that big of a deal, but, you know, I participated. That's how I broke my thumb. And I participated in it for about, I don't know, um, 12 games before I hurt my thumb. Bro, listen, I've never been so sore after after matches, man. And, yeah. and rugby is an intense sport. But watching watching footy, man, I, I literally was just like, this is this is beautiful. Like this right here. I like how fast it moves up and down the field. Like where sometimes yeah. I feel like rugby, you're sitting there watching a lot of scrums. Yeah. You don't really have that in footy. And because of that, I think players are hitting like i don't know a lot about rugby but i feel like rugby is a game of maximum strength whereas footy is a game of maximum athletic ability like to think about when some of the most fun memories i have of being a kid right is like playing ultimate frisbee oh, right? yeah. because you can run as fast as you can you can jump as high as you can and that's what you see in footy all the time people going at full speed and like laying it all out there and they're not wearing any pads or helmets or anything. So like it's a fun. real man sport, right? A real, and I think that it kind of like speaks to his durability. And we know Josh Giddy's dad had his number retired for his, um, his NBL team. So basketball is in his blood. It's not like, Oh, sure. he was going to for sure be a footy player. But I think for him, he looks at that as actually like it was a, he had to make a choice. Mm -hmm. Like he had to pick, one or the other. And he went with basketball, but for us, like watching some of the skills outside of the kicking, even though like you're saying the kicking teaches how to be on balance, how to be in position and how to make sure that, you know, you're passing with your lower body, which is right. something that again, you're using the strength to do that, which is not something that's very common for basketball players to know. Right. And a lot more on the basketball court is happening in a very short amount of space. So, like understanding though, as the game of footy condenses around a goal or goal post or whatever they're really called, right? That's when you have to be really elusive in your passes because mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of defenders in this small area. So these one armed hook cross court passes when he's looking the other way and stuff like that, it's not exactly a footy pass, but it has that. Another thing I kind of noticed is Giddy has this tendency to go into like a crab dribble, if yeah. you will, like when he's doing his spin move, if the defense pressures him, he yep. knows how to like protect the ball with his body without picking it up. Hmm. Right. Absor so he absorbs the contact with his ass essentially. Yeah, exactly. And, and he can kind of like cover it, keep the ball dribbling. And then when he, you know, has the, the ID, the defender taking away his momentum, he can then, keep his dribble alive as he goes. And I, I used to look at that as like, maybe he doesn't have the best um, handles, right? Like yeah. you'll see like uh, Kyrie, like he'll always have the ball on the tip of his fingers, right? And 
Giddy kind of like had it like more like it protected, but I, I look at it now as like that's probably more like a footy skill than it's like but a that's lack what of you hands. teach in the NBA. Right. You teach in the NBA to protect the ball. Like, listen, the skills with footy mm-hmm. translate to the NBA. And we're going to see a lot of uh, talented players come out of Australia. And, uh, yeah, obviously we've seen a ton of them already come out. But we're going to see more and a higher level of them, uh, Australian players because uh, if footy is what you start with, right? It translates in- to basketball so much more, so yeah. much better. You know, yeah. like the positions and the and the post area and the post plays and like listen, it translates. And I think that's why I, I keep on looking at what Josh Giddy's done with this footy thing and how he started and played footy and then translated that to basketball is why he's gonna be so successful in the NBA. That the way he protects the ball, right? He's he's gonna do less and less turnovers. He the ball's not out here, the ball is in here. You know, if the ball was out here, just like in footy, it's going to get knocked around everywhere where he keeps it in here and he lets the plays develop or he lets his footwork develop. And then he's able to flicker it using the foot strength, man. I, I, I know I, I just like totally geeked out on, on AFL footy, but bro, this is because we have an Australian player and he's made it very known that like he enjoyed footy very much he enjoyed playing it when you watch him describe it and guys go to the go to the youtube video that you can pull up about josh giddy describing playing footy right and the and the rules and the contact like he gets passionate about it and that's what started this whole thing was listening to josh just talk about how footy like is such a beautiful amazing game and i was like all right right, right, ah you know i'll go pull it up i'll go take a look at it and it made me so fucking excited because now I, I'll never be the same as far as sports goes again because, like, you know, watching the NFL is is, is great because that's what I grew up watching, you know, for the last 30 years I've done so. Uh, but AFL is, is such an unbelievable sport. Like, I don't know, man. I can't wait till the season starts. Like, this is, this is going to be fun to be able to have a, another – another team to be able to start start, start cheering for. So, it, it, guys, listen, I know we got a lot of, you know, AFL and Australian people out there that, that, that listen, if you have a favorite team and pl- player or whatever, I, I'm getting into it. So please share with us, uh, you know, just your favorite team, favorite player, because I want to know more about the sport as much as I can. And I feel like, you know, just by the, the outpouring last time that we talked about Josh Giddy and, and footy, like, I, I felt like, there's an opportunity that, that I want to know more about the sport. And so if, if you're listening to the show, like reach out, let us know because I, man, I'm all in. This is, this is insanity and I love it. Absolutely. And we got to wrap it up now. We got limitations, bro. We cannot <laughs> upload unlimited size of files as we would wish if you're listening or if you're watching on Apple podcast, um, you know, that's where the limitations are. But I just want to give a quick shout out to three people, um, fans of footy, fans of the AFL who have hit us up. The first one is BRTHGI. We appreciate your comments about Giddy and putting us in this direction of watching some footy. That really started us down this path. And um, Brian Sinat, um, we appreciate you listening to, letting us know that we're on the right path. And we're going to keep digging because we're just getting started. Um, And... um, Hamish. I think I said it right. You got some Hamish. dope horns. Hamish, Hamish, Hamish. Okay. Something like that. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, dude. I'm sitting too far back, so I see what you're saying. Hamish, dude. We'll go with it. Um, we're, we're pumped to have you guys listening. It's been a lot of fun. We're learning more and more about a new game, and we're also going to take some time in the coming days to learn more about the NBL, which is obviously the same game we love, just played in different areas. I want to see if I can find some highlights of Josh Giddy's dad playing. I know we got his number retired, Ooh. so they must be out there. If they you have can point me in there. the right direction, yes, do it, and you'll get a shout-out. Thank you Hell so yeah. much for joining us, everybody. If you join us for The Last Storm, the Yankee Death Star, or No Offense Sports, we love you. We will Bam, see baby. you Friday. Football It's going to be wild. Bro, Who? before we go, we have 90 seconds, bro. Who's yeah. playing Thursday night? Uh, yeah, man. All right. 
We're in trouble, guys. <laughs> We're running out of time. Oh my god, dude. All right, so basically, if you're still with us, you're one of the few. <laughs> Dolphins, Bengals, baby. Ooh. Dolphins, Bengals. Ooh, bro, you got to pick now. Are the Dolphins for real? Bro, you got to pick now. 45 seconds. Dolphins, baby, Dolphins. Let's do it. Dolphins? Yeah. You're going to give me the Bengals? I'm going right, to give you the Bengals. I got that. It's a layup that. for you, baby. I got that. All right. All right. See ya. See you guys.